Simone Sfrizo is an architect graduated at uh, U of Venice from 2019-2020. has been visiting professor at ENSTP Yonde Cameroon and at uh, UTPL Loja Ecuador. In 2019, he has been appointed Italian Design Ambassador by the Italian Ministry of Foreign Affairs. In 2020, he has joined the University of Portsmouth, UK, as a visiting professor. Simone is co-founder of uh, TAM Associati, a team of architects and researchers whose building solutions worldwide improve lives, strengthen communities, and provide creative responses to climate change, uh, combining high quality with affordability. Uh, I would like to add some notes about uh, Tama Sociati. Uh, the firm has won widespread recognition and numerous prizes. In particular, I'm, I would say, uh, uh, I would like to uh, highlight this, uh, especially the 2013 Aga Khan Award for Architecture. For our students, I would like to you to be aware that the uh, Aga Khan Award is one probably of the two most important. Uh, prize worldwide that an architect could uh, uh, achieve. So uh, this is an uh, important acknowledgement. And uh, uh, use Kapokin Prize and the Curry Stone Design Prize. In 2014, the Zoom Tobel Group Award. In 2014, the Italian Architect of the Year uh, Award. In 2017, the Lafarge uh, Olsim Acknowledgement Award. And uh, uh, last but not least, uh, I'm, uh, Simone has been uh, Tamasociati. So Simone, as part of Tamasociati, they've been curator of the Italian Pavilion at the 15 International Architecture Exhibition uh, della Biennale di Venezia. And this is, as you can imagine, particularly important to me because uh, being one of the curators in 2017, I have to particularly thank uh, uh, Simone because his advice has been enormously helpful in the organization of, of the Italian Pavilion, as you can imagine. So I, have, uh, uh, I owe you a lot for this uh, support. Mm, Tama Sociati is currently working in, uh, uh, especially in the Global South in, uh, and in a sub-Saharan area like Sudan, Tanzania, Kenya, Rwanda, Togo, uh, but also in Middle East, uh, in Lebanon, Palestine, Syria, and Italy. And if I remember correctly, you also have a project in Iraq? Yeah, in, in Iraq. Uh, so, uh, for me, it's a particularly honor and a pleasure to introduce to you uh, Simone Sfriso in, uh, in representation of Tama Sociati, because it's my uh, strong convincement that uh, Tama Sociati represent uh, the, uh, let's say, the most uh, influential in terms of impact, in terms of research, in terms of sensitivity, the, the best of Italian architecture in this moment. Um, so this is an opportunity for all of us to uh, get to know a little bit more about uh, a uh, project uh, that, as uh, Simone mentioned in the start, with our uh, project for the fragile world. So thank you, Simone, for being here with us. The stage is yours. So thank you. Thank you, Alessandro. Uh, the honor of the privilege is mine. And thank you for the invitation uh, to all of you. Uh, yeah, I'm really happy to be here. Um, I am one of the co-founders of Tama uh, Sociati and presentation. Yeah. Okay, I can do it. Um. Okay, yeah, as uh, Alessandro has said, we have worked, uh, um, we are a firm based in, uh, in Venice, in the historical center of Venice. Uh, we have all studied in the uh, University of Architecture of Venice, but we work mainly abroad, mainly in uh, the global, uh, the global south. Um, oh. Hello, hello. Okay. Um, yeah, and uh, we we work for uh, mainly for pro bono associations, uh, for uh, uh, foundations, uh, and also since uh, uh, two thousand and five uh, uh, for uh, NGOs uh, and international cooperation projects. 
And this led us uh, to have the opportunity to work uh, mainly in the uh, African continent, in sub-Saharan Africa, but also in, um, in, uh, in, uh, in Middle East as well. Um, countries such as uh, Iraq, uh, Afghanistan, uh, Yemen. Um, yeah, so we have worked uh, uh, mainly on the boundaries. Uh, and when I refer to boundaries, I refer to physical boundaries, uh, but also to social boundaries, uh, um, war-torn boundaries as well. And so uh, the boundaries uh, that we have uh, repeatedly crossed uh, uh, through our work as architects highlight uh, the condition of extreme fragility that characterized the present time. Uh, therefore, without wanting to go back to ancient meanings uh, uh, of the word of fragility, uh, which recall also moral questions, uh, uh, we can limit the observation to the physical and tangible dimension of the present condition. Um, Climate crisis, uh, pandemics, uh, local and fragmented wars are forcing us to experiment in an edited uh, condition of shared vulner vulnerability. This is a quote coming from uh, Maria Tessa Quasson, who has been the curator of the uh, 2017 uh, uh, Philippines uh, Pavilion. I think it's interesting to read that part of it when she says that we are relatively we relentlessly face the fleets of displacement, discrimination, disasters, and nature is our great leveler. Um, emerges this atmosphere of shared vulnerability. So saying this, uh, mm, I don't want to seem apocalyptic uh, because uh, at the end it would, uh, it would be an easy escape route uh, from our duties uh, in having to be responsible designers uh, of the of the present and the future, reconciling human rights and ecology. So and saying this, I, I want to go back to, to two documents uh, that we consider in our every day's work, uh, in our office, in our studio, uh, fundamental in our approach to uh, architecture. So the first one is the uh, Universal Declaration, Declaration of uh, uh, Human Rights in 1948, after the Second World War. Uh, perhaps it is, uh, uh, how can I say it? partly mm, outdated document precisely because it focuses on the human uh, and only in indirectly on the natural environment. But by reading it, is it possible to find uh, the foundations of human rights uh, and the rules of uh, human coexistence? Uh, and, but it's not a small thing, I can say. So I, I just want to cite one of the articles that is particularly important for me. For me, it is of uh, Article 25. Uh, that says everyone has the right to a standard of living adequate for his health and well-being and himself of himself and his family, including housing and medical care and necessary social service. So housing, medical care, social service. Uh, three issues that directly refer to an important part of our work as architects and designers, namely the right to housing, healthcare spaces and social spaces. The second document uh, is the global, uh, the global Goals for Sustainable uh, Development. Um, yeah, I am aware that, uh, uh, unfortunately, sustainability uh, somehow nowadays is, uh, I can say, a tricky word um, because uh, it has been overused and abused. And, uh, yeah, if you want to banalize... Uh, 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 the meaning of uh, the correct, the proper meaning of a word, the easiest way is to overuse it. So okay. it's, 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 if everything is uh, sustainable, nothing is really sustainable. Uh, so it's a sort of paradox. But I, I think that is in, it is important that uh, uh, sustainability has become a word that, that uh, uh, it's sort of everyday use word. Um, and uh, the more we move uh, away from an elitist dimension, uh, the more we can hope to spread concept necessary to build critical mass. And I think it, this is important when we, it's still important and fundamental when we talk about sustainability. So talking about sustainability, uh, we mean the need to bring the concept of environmental sustainability into resonance with economic sustainability as well. Through the definition of a methodological approach capable of generating uh, an aesthetic based on a synergy of two factors, 
uh, is it is what we call sort of ecology of economy, uh, capable of generating an architecture sober, essential, simple, resilient, capable of combining beauty and efficiency, respect for the environment and the people. Um, yeah, what it seems seems uh, uh, to us is uh, maybe. Mm, there is something missing in uh, the 17 goals for, uh, um, for uh, sustainability. Uh, it seems to me that uh, it tackles uh, the question of sustainability in a very technical and pragmatic way, maybe in, in an Anglo-Saxon uh, approach somehow, uh, but it also seems to us that something is missing. Uh, precisely, uh, questions of, of design and beauty as healing pro, uh, process. I am aware of that when we talk about uh, beauty, which is also another tricky word, but uh, uh, normally architects don't talk about, it. don't use the word beauty. It's, it's, uh, so maybe the beauty is something that you try to achieve, but you are, you are never really able to, to do it. But, uh, uh, we would like to say that uh, we should give the proper the proper meaning to the to, 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 to the word beauty. Um, so, but which kind of architecture are we talking about, or which kind of excellence should we achieve through uh, design and beauty? Um, yeah, because when we refer to contexts like this, context of war, context of extreme poverty, displacement, uh, perif abandoned peripheries, what is the role of design and beauty in these contexts? Do we really have a role as designers or it is definitely a marginal uh, role? Um, is it possible to fight uh, uh, inequality and poverty and stop climate change through design and beauty? And yeah, moreover, if our architecture in overdeveloped uh, countries is the architecture of uh, excellence in our world, in the lucky part of the world, I can say, our task should be to think of an architecture of dignity. Uh, from the paradigm of the extraordinary, we move on to that of appropriateness as an oppos oppositional form that testifies to an alternative made up of forms above all, all of processes. So this idea of architecture does not promise a new theory. Um, it is rather the idea of a practice that has to be, has to reconstruct its own role as a common understanding appropriately disseminated and shared, capable of caring of places and developing human capital in every country working on spaces of dignity, spaces of dialogue, spaces of care, and spaces of equality as well. So I want to show you today four projects, um, uh, three projects carried out in uh, the African continent and one in, uh, in Italy, in Pecholi, that is, uh, uh, in these days, exhibited in the Old Westbury. It is part of an exhibition about the uh, Petrolli experience. Um, I want to start from this project. It's a 10 years old, uh, already 10 years old project. Uh, it was the second project that we have carried out uh, in, uh, in Africa for emergency. That is a, a very famous uh, and important uh, in Italian NGO. Um, we were asked, uh, okay, just a few words about the context. Uh, Sudan, we were asked to build this pediatric clinic in Port Sudan. Port Sudan is the most important uh, uh, port in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in Sudan along the, 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 um, the Nile. It, uh, it had a huge demographic development uh, with an increase of its population from 30,000 inhabitants in 2000 to almost 530,000 in 2012. Uh, due to the civil war uh, that uh, was when it was a, an inter-ethnic uh, war. Um, it was a civil war. 
but definitely I can say that it, it was a, a war, uh, the real uh, reason of a war was the control of, of oil and resources of a country. So um, internal migrations from the most dangerous uh, places uh, in the country to the two biggest uh, important uh, cities for Sudan and Khartoum. And so we were asked uh, to work on this context, uh, this uh, um, endless uh, periphery uh, uh, without any kind of uh, uh, infra public infrastructures, uh, social infrastructures. So uh, uh, of the question of uh, realizing a pediatric clinic seemed to us uh, to uh, recall uh, to require something more. So since the very beginning, we have tried to conceive the, the pediatric clinic as a sort of civic center. So uh, it was about uh, considering the place of a place for a social gathering, a place that could be a center for, uh, 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 um, for the local community. And so the first act was to realize a uh, public square uh, with, uh, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with trees uh, and uh, uh, a big portico. Uh, so when we talk about portico, it is maybe something autobiographical. It comes from our architectonical uh, culture. But uh, uh, it is, I think, normal when you work in, in foreign in a, in, a, in, a, in foreign countries uh, with other communities, first of all, to find out a way to resonate with local culture. This, uh, this means that uh, in every project, we try to set up a participatory processes. We try to work directly with uh, uh, local communities. Uh, uh, we are definitely lucky to work with NGOs that are able to put on the same table, not only designers and architects and um, doctors and the administrative, administrative staff, but also sociologists, anthropologists, uh, and uh, representatives of the local countries, local, uh, the local uh, communities. And this means that uh, I can say that our work is to, maybe to, to listen and to translate uh, in architecture, all of the requests that, that are coming from different sides. And uh, yeah, what happened is that uh, very fastly, uh, this, uh, this clinic has been recognized by the community as a, as a place uh, uh, belonging to, to, uh, to, 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 to themselves. Um, so, um, the portico uh, is uh, a place of a triage, the entry, but is also a public, a public. Uh, it is also a public square, in a in a in a periphery, in a, in a, in a, in a shanty town where no kind of public space uh, are uh, are existing, and uh, also the playgrounds uh, that are conceived for. Uh, uh, the young patients are also open for all the, 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 the children uh, that are living in the neighborhood. So what happens that uh, uh, the community, as I said, fastly recognized that place as belonging to there. And uh, what is important for me uh, is, yes, uh, uh, the trees are growing up, uh, but what, 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 also what happened in that corner uh, the precarious uh, houses were, were not present when we realized uh, the, the clinic, but uh, people recognized the place where, place where they could set up informal economic activities. So place important for their uh, everyday activities. So they started to move uh, in, uh, near, near the clinic. And... Uh, yeah, it is also about uh, uh, local techniques. We normally we don't go with uh, um, very precise, uh, detailed design uh, project, but we normally uh, go with an uh, open project. It means that uh, working in these places, you have to be really uh, 
able and fast to, to change the project during its uh, realization uh, due to the possibility to, to, to find uh, materials during the con uh, contractions, uh, construction side and uh, uh, forcing uh, us to work with uh, um, local materials, uh, uh, but also with uh, the local skills uh, of, of the community. This means that it's not only about bringing healthcare, but it's also uh, working with uh, uh, local workers, uh, so bringing also economic uh, opportunities uh, for, uh, um, for the communities. And uh, we also try to find out the proper mix, uh, the proper, proper balance between uh, um technological solutions and the traditional solutions um this means for example in this case to, to repurpose uh, uh, the bad gears uh, the wind catching towers uh, coming from the arab house tradition uh, uh, coming from uh, uh, the lesson of a great master architect such as uh, um, hassan fatih uh, we have also worked with uh, the, the basement cooling uh, uh, principles. Uh, we have adopted this uh, adiabatic humidifier that is a, a very banal machine. It costs more or less two thousand dollars, but it's, uh, it is available on the local market. Uh, this we this means that we try to, if it is possible, not to import uh, 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 MEP systems uh, coming from abroad because uh, this can cause problems because uh, it is not it is not only about um, being really cost effective uh, uh, during the construction phase uh, but uh, what happens after we have finished our work uh, in the phase of the maintenance uh, that has to be really simple uh, if somebody, somebody something is not working uh, uh, local workers have to be able to repair it fastly uh, and in an, in an, in an economic way. Um, just to say that with this very, very low cost of system, uh, partially natural system, um, we were able to bring down the temperature from on, on about 10 degrees, uh, uh, bringing up the humidity from 21% uh, to 44%, and that is uh, uh, a, good, a good value. And... Um, with a consumption of uh, uh, three kilowatts. That is really, uh, really nothing if you consider that it's a clean. This is a small project uh, that we have carried out in 2016 in uh, a refugee camp in the north of uh, Iraq, in the Kurdish uh, Iraq, in the Kurdistan area of northern Iraq. At the time, more than 2.5 million refugees and internally displaced persons have been forced to search for a safe place to shelter from the fighting that has passed the whole area in the land. So, um, this is the context. Uh, we had to, 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 to work and we had to deal with. And this is what uh, uh, happens when the UN is, uh, is uh, trying to, to improve the, 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 the living conditions in, uh, in spontaneous refugee camps. That is, I think, a good solution, but it's a very, again, a very technical, technical solution. Um, so uh, I can say that... Uh, so, we have worked with uh, prefabricated uh, uh, clinics uh, that uh, was uh, definitely the most uh, um, economic way to realize uh, uh, polyambulatory. But it, it is, uh, I can say, a project uh, that deals with uh, the 3%. So uh, our idea was to improve the budget of 3% in order to transform this uh, uh, gray boxes uh, in places that could, uh, uh, in could in, in which could be recognized a uh, social value. Um, yeah, so again, from an idea to low cost, uh, from uh, an idea of place that could, in which people could see, uh, could feel that uh, 
uh, uh, are not only taking care of uh, the bodies uh, uh, of the disease, but they are all also taking care of uh, of uh, of uh, the people. And uh, yeah, and this was uh, the, 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 the result. So it's a very very simple project somehow. Um, it is also sort of back and forth journey. So what we have uh, learned uh, working in those contexts and how we have relearned to be architects also in our context. Um, this is a, a project uh, that we are carrying out. It is it is a an ongoing uh, project uh, uh, we are uh, working on in uh, in, uh, in Legoli. Legoli is a, a small village in the municipality of uh, of Pecholi. Um, yeah, this is Pecholi, so it is it's a very picturesque uh, and nice uh, village in uh, in the. Tuscany Hills, so a completely different context. Uh, but uh, yeah, this is uh, um, the counterpart of, of the village of Pecholi, that and it is a, a large landfill uh, located in its territory. So a landfill is certainly a problem until it is transformed into an, an opportunity, if it is possible. Uh, this was done by the municipal administration through a strategy made of optimization of a waste treatment process, environmental regeneration of the site and its surroundings, uh, investment in landscape art projects, uh, repopulation of inhabited centers, uh, creation of a civic and public spaces, and also tourist attractions uh, initiatives as well. Um, so uh, the waste treatment plant is nowadays an uh, important economic and ecological asset, an attractive uh, magnet capable of spreading over the entire territory, identifying the Valdera as an avant-garde for the great theme of environmental and social regeneration. And we were, uh, we, it was an architectural competition, a two-phase competition. We participated in the competition and uh, the jury decided to select our project. Uh, the project was focused on this uh, uh, Abandoned uh, and used uh, farmhouse. Uh, the task was to realize a, a, a civic center, but they didn't give they didn't give us a, a, um, a real program, a functional program. So we were also asked to propose a, 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 a program of use for uh, for the new for the new. Uh, so the new farmers. So we proposed uh, to realize a, a digital, a, a civic digital lab. And uh, we decided to do this because uh, uh, the digital world, uh, in our, um, we think that it's confined in a material and material dimension without any apparent physical impact on the territory without any impact on the environment in which we live. So we therefore tend to forget and even ignore the digital technologies are directly connected to the use of energy, matter, and the soil. Um, so creating a, um, a digital hub uh, means all uh, above all starting and uh, fueling uh, uh, a necessary and innovative reflection on the evolving opportunities uh, offered by the, uh, digital technology, but also on the problematic nature of its of its impact on the environment. Um, yeah, so two words about the design strategies, uh, the restoration of a, of a former farmhouse, uh, new public spaces for the local community, it's like a small village, um, less than 300 uh, inhabitants, uh, most of them are uh, elderly, uh, and so we were also asked to get services for the elderly. Um, a civic center, a digital hub, and also a student house uh, in uh, the first and the second floor of the project of uh, also a, a housing project. And uh, yeah, the expansion with a therapeutic pool for the elderly, the terrace, uh, and the public garden. Um, yeah, I go fastly. 
So it's like a, a ground floor plan with a new digital civic lab. It's an open air, uh, open air spaces. Uh, uh, and so the possibility to set up a didactic uh, teaching activities, uh, uh, exhibitions, uh, uh, but also activities of, uh, of a community, of a local community as well. Uh, the outdoor spaces, the green, uh, green square, the new entry, uh, therapeutic pool uh, for the local community, and the multifunctional didactical spaces as well. Uh, new volumes, uh, cantilevered yeah. volumes. We have this fantastic view to the Valdera Valley. Uh, we, wanted to, 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 we wanted to give value to the opportunity to, to have this fantastic site to the uh, valley. And okay, this is an overall view of, a, of a, the whole complex. I have also uh, a short video. Okay, so completely different context, the pattern. Somehow, there is also in the project for Legoli this idea of uh, considering always a local community as a real client. Um, back to back to Africa. Um, we have uh, completed uh, last year uh, a bigger project. This is a uh, uh, center of excellence for pediatric surgery, in which we have the chance uh, uh, to, to collaborate with uh, uh, Renzo Piano building workshop. So we have co uh, designers with uh, Renzo Piano building workshop uh, and also with uh, Milan Engineering. Uh, and uh, Prisma Engineering and Emergency, the Emergency Technical Office. Uh, a more ambitious project, uh, the biggest pediatric uh, uh, hospital and clinic of Kampala, that is the capital of, uh, of uh, Uganda. And um, yeah, again, a very simple and uh, rational project, even if in this case, we have the chance to work with uh, um, uh, a, a more important uh, uh, budget, even if uh, the request of uh, the NGO was always to be really aware about uh, uh, being cost effective uh, in, in, in this project and to improve uh, the, 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 the use uh, where possible of local materials and local skills. Um, yeah, this is uh, uh, our first rendering and uh, of the building during the construction. But uh, let's say Sorry. So uh okay. maybe it's not clear. Don't, don't worry. Uh, okay, you can see just a, a problem with a uh, So the decision to uh, propose uh, the use of uh, rammed earth, uh, the use of a pisé. Pisé is uh, an ancient building technique that requires 
use of a mixture of excavated uh, earth sand gravel little water uh, subsequently compacted in uh, wooden and uh, and uh, metal forms it is used uh, definitely in all uh, all africa but also in asia in asia in the south of uh, of, uh, of america as well it is a very ancient technique but is also used uh, uh, nowadays, uh, especially in rural areas, it has the, the characteristic uh, that it does not need uh, particular uh, skills uh, by uh, by the workers. Um, so it is uh, really easy to involve uh, community in uh, communities in the construction uh, of uh, of a building. So. Uh, the idea is that uh, uh, you can use the, 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 um, the soil uh, directly coming from the excavation of the basement, uh, and uh, the soil becomes uh, the material that is used for uh, the realization of the, of the walls. So all the, uh, all the walls have been the vertical walls have been realized in round earth. So uh, the phases uh, from the excavation to the sifting of uh, uh, the earth, the formworks that are exactly the same work, formworks that are normally used for reinforced concrete, but you don't need any, you don't need to, 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 to work with, uh, with, uh, with steel. Uh, so it's only, it's only about soil. So the pouring of a mixture, um, the removal of uh, the formworks uh, and uh, the drying process. So the process is exactly the same that is uh, that is used for reinforced concrete, but uh, uh, the material is a material uh, that you can find directly on the site, and uh, it also allows us allowed us to work with very very simple uh, technical uh, drawings. Uh, that is also uh, an issue without losing uh, uh, this idea of, uh, 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 of realizing a center of excellence because this is an important uh, task of, uh, of uh, the client of emergency, this idea that it does not have to exist a B-series uh, healthcare system in a B-series country, but you have to guarantee the same quality of healthcare that we normally achieve uh, in our world. Uh, metal structures uh, uh, for the horizontal stru um, uh, structures, uh, this means that uh, you can be really flexible in uh, the internal organization of, uh, of the, 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 the hospital. So again, it is about this finding the right balance between uh, uh, traditional techniques uh, and uh, uh, modern contemporary techniques and the metal form metal uh, structure for the, the for the canopies that are three uses the canopies uh, allows us to protect uh, the round earth uh, walls from the rain and uh, also to realize a very big uh, uh, photovoltaic plant so again technical drawings and uh, this is the from the uh, the, the simple part of the building, uh, the round earth wor uh, walls, to the or technical part of the building. So, again, this idea of balancing. Because sustainability in our vision has to mean simplicity. So, it is uh, uh, this idea of finding out the proper solution. That is, it does not have be necessarily the best solution in terms of innovation, in terms of technology, because uh, uh, super technology also brings high cost and, and uh, of realization and also high cost uh, and complicated process of maintenance as well. Uh, photovoltaic plants, I can guarantee more or less for 30% of electrical needs uh, of the entire hospital. That is a good goal somehow. Um, yeah, this is the, the last project, so I'm going to the end. Uh, we started in uh, 2022 to work on uh, uh, 
two modular uh, vocational training centers, uh, professional tra training centers, uh, centers in Al Fashir and Al Jenina in uh, Darfur. Uh, in this case, uh, the client was the German, uh, the uh, Beats, uh, the German corporation. The context uh, somehow it is very similar to the one I showed you before. So we are again in Sudan. And uh, uh, we were asked to, uh, to design these two vocational centers, but also to give them a strategy in order to be easily able to enlarge the, 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 the schools if required, but also to replicate uh, this models in other places. So somehow it was a, a prototype. So we started from a very simple structural grid, grid uh, a modular grid, uh, from the modular grid to the articulation or to articulation of the functional models uh, versus uh, a block composition. So and the, then the insertion of uh, life elements such as porches and Brisole that allows us to get variety uh, also in order to uh, micro uh, climatic conditions of uh, the world complex. And uh, the structural grid, the models also allow us to be um, easily adapt uh, the modular buildings to the land morphology. So to propose this idea of positive functional adaptation. So. Why a model? Uh, why to use a model? Because uh, it is a, a simple design process because of flexibility and adaptability, because it uh, also of a simpler construction, the replicability, energy self sufficiency of every single model, and also the uh, possibility to, 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 to have a very uh, straight and precise budget control. Um, Okay, anyway, uh, jump through. Okay, so here we are. Uh, so this is the abacus of the whole project. Uh, the generic room entrances, uh, the, the basic modules, uh, the bigger modules, uh, the wind towers, so all the um the elements that uh, are put together uh the porch models the garden models in order to obtain different uh, modular combinations so courtyard blocks uh, and typology blocks uh, liner blocks and so on two projects uh, alpha share we started to uh, build the Al Fashera uh, school and Al Genina that had to be the second project to be realized in, uh, in, uh, in Sudan. Um, we started to uh, build, uh, uh, we opened uh, the, the, the building site uh, um, 18 months ago. We uh, were able to realize uh, the, 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 the basement. Uh, foundations and where, while we were uh, realizing the brick walls, uh, civil, the civil war in Sudan uh, created the condition in which it was uh, too dangerous to go on with the building, so we had to close uh, the, 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 um, the building site. And yeah, we hope that we will be able to be allowed to go back uh, and go on with uh, the building because I think it's really important uh, for uh, uh, improving uh, the economic conditions uh, of, uh, of, uh, of, of, of the local community. I have also a video and I'm finishing with uh, this video.
So in concluding, uh, saying that I think that the utility needs uh, the quorum, collective value, in placing these ter terms at the center of reflection, the meaning of architecture is played out of today. And uh, Giancarlo De Carlo said, what, and what about beauty? Beauty is for purpose, but what matters is the process that produces it. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. This was a very beautiful talk, and actually, you know, we, I, I, it's the first time I see in detail all your work, and it's re very, very uh, relevant to what uh, we we teach our students. Uh, so, because we try to work with sustainable methods and uh, you know circular methods, and kind of this kind of, I love this the simplicity of the materials and working with the earth, and uh, very very beautiful spaces. Uh, I was curious. Um, where, where is... yes. I was not supposed to do the moderator. He's the moderator. <laughs> <laughs> so I I was um I was I was curious um when you and then I'm gonna give you for the the dialogue um when you saw the materials like uh in the earth and they started like working directly. Uh, I, I just curious. I was just curious to learn more about this process of like just working directly with the earth. Like, is there like any kind of post processing or like what's the whole, what's the the process of of doing that? Yeah, well, uh, as I as I said, the process is really simple because it belongs to uh, the memory and the capacity of a local community. So. Uh, what is interesting to say is that uh, uh, yeah, working with an emergency is having the opportunity to work with a, um, an NGO that uh, has this idea of not only bringing healthcare, but also to bring uh, economic opportunities. So uh, all the technical uh, um, staff, uh, the non-medical staff uh, is... Uh, is coming from uh, from the locals, so they set up. Uh, they don't only build the hospitals; they also uh, set up uh, technical um, trainings, uh, worker uh, trainings uh, for the communities, and uh, yeah, working with simple and local technique techniques allows us to be really um, cost effective, and also to uh, set up a, a, a simple and effective dialogue with. Uh, with, uh, with the locals. Um, and uh, it is also a question, uh, somehow, somehow I can say it's also a question of belonging because they uh, people, when they uh, work with their capacities, uh, um, they recognize uh, the building as the buildings, the architectures as theirs. Um, it is about genius logi somehow. Uh, and um, yeah, it was in interesting. Genius Lachi by Christian Norbert Schulz has been one of the most important um, books that I have read when I was when I was a student. And it is interesting that uh, in Genius Lachi, uh, when uh, Norbert Schulz uh, uh, chooses the case studies, uh, um, he there is a, a chapter about uh, Siena. But there's also there is also a chapter about uh, Sudan, and uh, <clears throat> when he when he when he describes Sudan, he's talking about this uh, um, capacity of uh, the Sudanese to build uh, um, protected buildings, uh, domestic buildings uh, um, that are somehow the opposite. Uh, of a, uh, of a harsh climate, uh, of a very mm, difficult uh, context in which they live. And uh, um, so local materials, uh, the, the, the traditional colors, uh, the, 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 uh, 
um, soil colors for the external walls are definitely coming from the traditional solutions, the fresh colors of uh, the interiors, the white, the blues, uh, uh, are all, um, can say, the strategies uh, uh, in, uh, that we adopt uh, in order to try to enter in resonance uh, with uh, uh, the physical context, but especially with uh, the, the, the social context. Thank you, Simone. Well, there are a couple of notes that I want to add uh, for the sake of the discussion. I think uh, a couple of elements that emerge from your presentation, but of course, uh, also because uh, um, I have so many opportunities to discuss this with you, I think will be of interest, especially for our students. One of these elements is, well, this element is the fact that uh, uh, TAM associated projects are real, uh, if you want, urban living lab in the sense that uh, you go there, you learn from the site, you bring a certain level of knowledge, but then this, be this become also machine of education. We have seen also in the last project that try to build on top of uh, the local knowledge. So it's about uh, uh, crossing uh, 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 the knowledge of who those who come and those who, um, who have uh, an heritage to, to propose. Uh, this leads to what I want to say because this is something we discuss very often. This leads to something which is very special in my opinion in this project. And uh, it's very important for students in the sense that uh, it allows us to understand what is the difference between the theory and practice. Uh, in that context, with this kind of project, uh, uh, when we talk about sustainability passive devices, uh, the urgency and the need of making this work and make these uh, diagrams that you see there, and I tell you, I'm telling you this as uh, someone who has been teaching technology as a main uh, topic. I see my colleague, by the way, Wojtek, thank you for being here. I, I think you can confirm and uh, brings the discussion to the ground. How many, uh, if I can say, how many uh, projects with students we have seen where we try to discuss what is a passive strategy and we see arrows that are very theoretical and nobody really knows if they work or it becomes more like a buzzing word or let's say buzzing word, so the passive device, more like a flagship. So what I think it's relevant here is that uh, it's a need for you that this system work, one thing. And I think it's important. So I highlight this because uh, give a different value to this diagram that we see in many magazines, but in this case, they, they must work because of the context uh, of the uh, extreme climate uh, and the economy, etc. The second aspect is that if I see them and I quote him, not myself, but Thomas Auer watching these projects, is that it's when you talk about beauty and the uh, right to beauty and the fact that uh, somehow uh, beauty, I find fantastic uh, that we, we agree on no, but this is the beauty is, is could be also the 3% of the project. So we don't need to go, but it's, it's something that we can, but we need to make this effort. Uh, I find it very interesting because if you watch your project and we know that for constraint, you keep uh, your design uh, linear as much as possible. But at the, end the at the end of the story, the character of the building is very much uh, augmented by these devices. So in a way, it seems that uh, these passive devices are giving a character that it's part of this beauty, which uh, a sort of minimalistic idea, as you show in the in the Iraqi refugee camp, uh, at the end is not there. So we think that uh, between uh, uh, the uh, the okay, so the minimal need for survival and the beauty, there is not such a big gap as we expect. But this gap. As a, as a value and could be also related to the environmental quality of the building. I'm talking about the fact that this porch become also uh, something that make your building more valuable. So this is a second aspect. So actually I just wanted to highlight this. So I don't want to make a question, not because I'm not interested, but because I know this project and uh, I would like them to make two questions, but I wanted for the sake of our students to be aware of the quality of this project in these terms, in the, the fact that there is a sort of effectiveness. So before going ahead, if it's okay with you, I will ask if you have any question. Is it working? Hello. Hi. Um... I have two questions. The first one is how 
do um, the locals at the place, do they come into the design process as, as, at all? Like, do you, um, do you do any like primary, um, primary questionnaires or anything to understand about the local co uh, context from their point of view at all? Is that part of the design process? Like, do you, I don't know, hire someone from that area that knows how things operate there? Um, is that is that like a, an approach that you take? Or do you do your research from a kind of, you know, more from a distance? What would you say? Yeah. Um, yeah, well, uh, we are part of a process. Um, uh, it means that, uh, as I said, uh, we had uh, the chance uh, and the opportunity to work with uh, uh, clients uh, such as uh, commitments such as uh, emergency but also for um, Aga Khan uh, foundation and uh, really clever clients uh, because uh, before starting a project they normally open a local office uh, and uh, so it is about before starting to design an hospital or a school or any kind of facility, uh, you before you have to be you have to be there. Mm, you have to uh, build relations with uh, uh, with uh, uh, all the stakeholders, and uh, this is why they also normally involve in the process. Uh, um, experts uh, in uh, participatory processes, uh, um, uh, also sociologists uh, or anthropologists. Uh, and so we are a small part of the process. Uh, so it is uh, uh, what we have to, we have to be able to, um, um, to uh, transform uh, all these requests that are coming uh, to make a synthesis uh, and uh, only after to transform uh, uh, a complex project program, complex in terms of uh, of uh, social needs, uh, I can say, in uh, plans, uh, in spaces, colors, uh, in architecture. So uh, it is uh, having the uh, humility, humilità. Being humble to 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 understand that you are only a small part of a process. Uh, I think this is fundamental. I think I, I am. I really believe that uh, architecture is not uh, an uh, autonomous discipline, but uh, it has always to involve uh, uh, all the possible kinds of knowledge that can bring value inside the project. Um, and my second question was, um, you had some projects where you have these urban kind of squares. Um, I wanted to ask the function of these spaces that can be used in multiple ways. Was there any times where um, you saw uh, you showed an example where the people started migrating towards the side of the project? Were there any times where these kind of uh, spaces were used in unexpected ways from the locals well yes um yeah for, for example that uh, the public space uh, in front of uh, the pediatric clinic in sudan the first project i showed uh, fastly become uh, uh, an informal uh, market so it means that uh, that place was recognized as a, as a place uh, yeah for healthcare but also for uh, building uh, uh, microeconomic opportunities for a local community because of people coming, uh, patients, the families of the patients, the relatives, and so on. Uh, and so it fastly became something that we hoped, but we weren't really um, sure that could happen, you know, that could become this kind of a, a civic center. Um, uh, it means that uh, uh, having uh, trying to to be flexible in uh, uh, the idea that uh, uh, when you work in places like that, you don't have to be hyper specialized. You have to be open to any kind of opportunities that 
can happen in uh, in that place because life happens. Thank you for your talk. Uh, it was very beautiful to see those projects. Um, I have a, a question, I guess, in regards to the, you can call it a logistical aspect of working, especially within the project where you use the local materials and then you sort of um, allowed or, or led the locals sort of assist the production of that building. Uh, in compared to a normal architectural project where you don't have to educate the locals to use that local materials, when you have to tell them how the benefit and how did they should you do that? Can you tell us a little bit about your role as the architect? How far did you become beyond the architect? Like, do you have to explain them the process, why they were doing that? Uh, just so students can understand that when you try to create a circular process, it's not just another building that you're trying to create, it's more of a system. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, well, uh, surely it is, uh trying to conceive a project as a sort of sort of open system so you have to be really fast in changing uh, uh, the project uh, during the, 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 the construction process and uh, yeah to be honest uh, the, the, the building sites are normally managed by local architects uh, by the technical offices of uh, emergency or uh, Haga Khan foundation um so we normally supervise the, 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 the building site uh, we work a lot with uh, zoom uh, and um, uh, skype and and so on and uh, it is also uh, i already said that uh, it's also a process that allows us to be really cost effective because uh, um, I say that I can say that uh, sustainability uh, in Western world is normally conceived uh, in adopting a super uh, high tech uh, solutions, uh, complicated uh, uh, detailed design solutions. Uh, uh, having the opportunity to work in those contexts uh, uh, allowed us to relearn to be architects, uh, to adopt uh, simplicity as a strategy, and also to, to, to be able to change the project, uh, to adapt it uh, um, uh, during, its, during its realization. And uh, we, we are also allowed we we could also we had also the, the chance to realize project in which uh, which has has been completely realized by local community we have realized a, um, um, a house for a for a women association in uh, in uh, in uh, senegal that has been completely realized with, with a local community so we sent the, the drawings the technical drawings it is a a Creative Commons project. Uh, uh, it is an open source project, so all the technical drawings are. Uh, uh, you can find it in a, in a, in, a, in, a, in our website, and um, so being very simple means that they were able to build that themselves without any uh, particular uh, technical uh, skill or technical capacity and also to replicate it. Thank you. Well, thank, uh, thank you so much for sharing your uh, exquisite work. So throughout the year, so what would you say is the most, um, after working through all this project, what do you think is how, how what sensibilities or what qualities or what tool sets should we uh, provide our students with uh, to work in this fragile world, you know, to, to design for these fragile situations? Yeah, no, it is a good question. I, well, I, I, no, it is a difficult question. Uh, how can I say? Um, we had the chance uh, to, uh, to have access to a sophisticated uh, education. So I think that part of our responsibility is giving back. 
and uh, but it means that uh, I don't really think, and I want to be clear about that. I don't really think that uh, uh, working uh, in uh, in a war-torn area, working for an NGO, gives you a moral superiority, because uh, at the very end, uh, the responsibility is of an architect is trying to do his best in every case, because uh, when you when you when you mm, build, a, uh, when you realize an architecture, you change the conditions of a place uh, for a long term, sometimes forever. And yeah, this is a big responsibility. So you have to be really aware about what you are doing, what you are doing in terms of uh, uh, transforming of, of the physical conditions of a place, but also the social conditions of a place. So our job is a fantastic job, but it's also a job that uh, uh, brings uh, also a big responsibility. Um, can I maybe uh, follow up on the question of Mario? First of all, um, thank you for the really great presentation and it stirs up uh, in a very provocative way, I think, many questions. And I think um, what one or what makes me more interested about it is, is also the disjunction a bit um, of you being educated in the Western world but working actually in a third world, and and now we are in a, in a moment where we really un, uh, unravel actually everything that we made wrong for the last fifty or hundred years in construction. Yeah, let's say after after modernism. Yeah, right? so the whole material selection process, yeah. um, the carbon footprint. Now we think about biodiversity, and of course health is an important one point. Yeah, and all of these um, are systems that are starting to be integrated and we don't know much about it, but you're working in an area where maybe um, some historical cultures of material matter processes are still intact and have not been fettered by Western superiority in design and manufacturing and fabrication because they have not been in touch with them, right? And how, how do you balance this kind of... Um, way of invading actually a culture um, that on the one hand aspires to be Western, right? They want to use concrete. They want to use brick and you have used brick. They want to use steel and glass and everything that is so fashionable. And we see this in other places in the Middle East. Yeah, And in instead, we should actually learn from them or unlearn while we are there Right and and try to elevate maybe potentially those and you have that in some of your projects those kind of residues of local material culture that might be actually the right way. Yeah, and I don't know maybe does it bring me to the question of where you have a project where you show rammed earth that um, to our current knowledge it appears to be one of the mm, most less impactful ways of building, but then you have a project where you actually use brick. And we know, we learned that in Africa, brick firing uses a lot of wood and the wood is really not very much um, present as we saw on many of your uh, larger urban uh, images. So they have to import the wood to burn the brick in the brick oven and it's actually um, a problem as well, right? So how do you balance this material decision? Who makes the call? what is the best for a local community okay i don't have a precise uh, precise uh, answer that means that uh, um uh, i don't want to say that every time is the first time but uh, you it, working in a, okay when we talk about africa or we talk about middle east uh, it's a sort of nonsense it's like talking about uh, europe but Europe is uh, Sicily, but it's also Finland as well. So it is, uh, first of all, going in a place, uh, uh, physically or virtually, understanding uh, the possibilities that you have in the place, uh, uh, the local skills, uh, uh, local professionals that could help. Uh, and um, it is also about trying to learn from Mm, uh, also from big master architects that 
somehow have been partially ignored by Western culture. I'm referring to uh, big names uh, such as uh, Peter Rich uh, or Pancho Guedes, uh, Charles Correa, uh, all the mm, experience of uh, tropical modernism. So uh, and that, this is one thing. The other thing is that it is true that uh, uh, when you uh, work in uh, emerging countries, uh, uh, um, local people are asking for the same quality that uh, that kind of modernity that for us is normal. Uh, if the, when when we started with this idea of uh, realizing the um, hospital in Uganda in Ramd Earth, the first reaction of uh, the local ministry of uh, of uh, healthcare was. Uh, uh, we have never done that. Are you really sure? We don't want to to to, to uh, a hospital in mood. Uh, we had to explain that uh, uh, our goal was to bring uh, um, a high standard of healthcare quality and a high standard of uh, uh, architectural quality uh, um, in that building, despite not despite but by using local materials. And uh, sometimes you have to convince that it is uh, the proper way, proper way in terms of, uh, of uh, the real meaning of uh, the word sustainability that, uh, uh, that we think, uh, when we think that sustainability, uh, the meaning of sustainability is simplicity in terms of uh, materials, in terms of choices, uh, in terms of impact, uh, without losing this idea of quality. Not really sure that I gave you a proper answer. Do any of our students have questions? Yeah. Lorenzo, you have a question. Yeah, yeah I can. Oh, sorry, it's okay. No, go for this. Oh, yes, then Oh, I'm just question. Uh, uh, thank you. No, 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 I was waiting for it. Just, I was thinking. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for your lecture, Fasley. It was so, so informative as a student who is just beginning to come into this architectural field. Uh, my question was more about the modular system that you kind of engineered to kind of make the building. Uh, more cost effective and simple uh, for the locals to build. Uh, my question is that can these modules be used in emergency situations where uh, urgent facilities have to be built in case of some impact due to like national disasters or something? And is this something that you think about when you're kind of designing these modules so that they can be replicated easily and built for these like social causes if they happen to come? Like, is this something that you're thinking about when you're designing these modules to be used in the scenario, like the scenario in a larger sense and not particularly to a very concentrated site? Okay, well, when, uh, when you are in the conditions of facing an emergency or natural disaster uh, um, you have to be really really fast this means uh, that uh, I can say that the example was for project for the refugee camp in terms of uh, economic cost and uh, and timing uh, there is no alternative to the prefabricated uh, structures that are already there are mm, the most cost effective on the market uh, are uh, easy, the most easy e e to, 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 to find to be to, to be tra transported and realized um, and so in that case what we try to do is to bring something something more um, uh, the, the, the modular approach is more about maybe the phase two, uh, when you have the opportunity to build something that ha can be more stable and uh, also to be uh, something that can be 
easily uh, replicated. Um, so uh, the level of uh, uh, training, uh, you can really reduce the level of training uh, of uh, who has, is called us to, to, to realize the building. So, for example, in, in the case of Alpha Sheena, the first, uh, uh, the first phase was to realize a, a, a scale one-to-one -one, uh, mock-up. And so after the mock-up, it was all there. They were everybody understood what they had to do in order to replicate that uh, that model so uh, in this in this case uh, it is uh, 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 transforming uh, uh, simplicity in a uh, easy repli replicable model uh, that can also be maybe implemented uh, optimized and transformed uh, in other contexts uh, this was the attempt. I didn't show today this project in in, 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 in Senegal, but you can find it in in our in our website uh, as a H two O project. Uh, it is a small house, uh, very very simple. Uh, it requires uh, uh, technical skills only for the realization of the small. Uh, technical block uh, where there is a, a water tank for a recycling of the, of uh, the water and the storage of the rainwater in, in a context in in which uh, we have two two months of rain and ten months uh, uh, substantially without rain, so uh, the water is uh, uh, the most important issue. And but all the, uh, the rest of the building was very very simple, and. Uh, um, uh, allowing everybody to to download the projects, uh, the, the, the technical drawings, of the detailed design, the design project means that. Uh, so I'll see also the hope that maybe somebody can improve the project uh, and maybe um, uh, in the future it can come back to us uh, in a in a better version. Hello. Hi, thank you for this amazing uh, work that you're doing. I, I very much appreciate it. I, I have a question that um, brings back the conversation to beauty at the beginning and goes away from the material and systematicity of the construction. But I thought uh, if for you, beauty was found not only in the process, but also in some of the images that you showed that had to do with um, being social and being creating um, spaces that are, um, yeah, social activators of urbanity or um, culture, like you say. So I find the beauty also there, and I was wondering if you wanted to talk about that. Yeah, well. Uh... It, 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 it somehow it is what Giancarlo De Carlo said. The brute beauty is the final uh, result, but beauty is the process. Beauty, beauty is the process that produces it. Brute beauty means that uh, if uh, through the realization of uh, a building, a house, um, a clinic, you are uh, also able um to activate communities uh, to bring uh, something that uh, 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 can be felt by uh, theirs uh, it it means that uh, you go over uh, just a, 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 what is a sort of I can say platonic uh, idea of beauty. Yeah, then in the process, in your case, would you say that in your process, in order to achieve that beauty, then you have to put something that, for me, is the care for the public spaces that you're doing, yeah. besides the function, provision of, you know, the whatever is needed, that is like the portico or the specific... Um, strategies that you as a designer put in the process is say this we don't move 
or this is the 3% of the budget and we keep it because it's beauty, but it also because it, it's going to attract people and it's going to generate something that has value yeah. socially. Yeah. Well, uh, I think it um, uh, somehow it's, 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 there's nothing new uh, because in, in 1960, Three, Christopher Alexander uh, wrote that. Uh, um, let me not really sure I'm able to cite, but it's more or less uh, um, architects, um, developers, um, public administrators have to be aware that uh, spaces between the buildings are as important as the buildings, and so uh, they have to act consequently. So it is, yeah, it is about building, trying to give uh, value to the spaces between. Mm. Can I uh, also add a comment about this? Because I totally agree with Florence in the sense that one thing that, of course, you notice because of the type of architecture, the way, uh, of course, some tend to be very humble in the process. But one thing that is very important to notice is that uh, they also are very, if I can tell this, very good writer. So they produce books with a high level of poetry, if I can say. Um, in one of these uh, texts that they have written, uh, there is exactly written what you said, uh, for instance, in the sense that, uh, uh, I, of course, it's a little bit more complicated, but I, I try to make this more simple. The fact that uh, adding the red to this Iraqi camp, which is an act of uh, beautification, if you want, but uh, there is a feedback phenomenon. So this is the act, act that made the space a social space. You might transform this in a, in a square. So the, it make uh, the, the same issue that uh, the, uh, what is the United Nations that provide the, the container, uh, the empty container. So it's not just the 3% th is exactly, uh, this is my interpretation, sorry if I take, but this 3% is exactly what you said, is uh, this 3% of uh, beauty make 100% uh, of social value. And you see the same, we were discussing with Christian before in, uh, in uh, Port Sudan, uh, when uh, uh, you start seeing the growing, the, the trees, and as uh, the, our student was saying, then you start seeing the people coming. We think, oh, it's beauty. You put a tree because it's beauty. But uh, what you have is really you go back to the very nature of humans, which is more, you know, it's, I think it's, evolu it's part of the evolution. So beauty is actually a system of feedback that makes us becoming better, more social, etc. I'll add, add this one, uh, unless you have uh, more questions. Of course, I would like to leave the, the final words to, to Simone, but just to complete this uh, at a different level and again it's about the narrative of their project Port Sudan this level of uh, social engagement is so high in certain projects that becomes even if I can say political what I mean is that uh, of course we know or let's say we heard about the uh, civil war what, what is what happened in Sudan in that period and still today wait, I don't know what is the situation but uh, the criticality and uh, I always been amazed, and uh, uh, he never said to the presentation, but I always said all after to come with this because this told me, he told me. Uh, and by the way, I want to thank also we we didn't mention, but because of Tam Massimo Lepore and Raul Pantaleo, who are your uh, Laura Candelperger, uh, Enrico Vianello, because I'm only one of part of the office. Uh, yeah, yeah. That, what I wanted to tell is that uh, we know that that. Uh, uh, the hospital, and we already know the social value, the beauty, the function, which is already a big impact. But what we don't know, at least what understood, is that in that moment during, let's say, let's call war difficulties, this was one of the few, if not the only, tell me if I'm wrong, the only place where we became a neutral space. So where people could come, is, is it correct that uh, this was the only space where the opposite part of the, 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 the could come back like in a sort of neutral space to discuss more relax. And I said, I agree. I, I don't agree in a positive sense with you that, yes, architects, we need to be humble. But uh, yes, I know I'm a chatterbox, I stop. <laughs> but I think this, this is always making me, in a way, uh, emotional. 
because I know that uh, he said, no, architects, we don't need to behave like if you are super hero. But in a way, I would like to see this as a fact that architecture, beauty of architecture in that case, can become uh, the only pace of peace in that in that country. And for me, this is, a, as you said, great responsibility. So I wanted to highlight this and leave uh, the last words to Simone. But I wanted to bring to your attention the project in Port Sudan, because really this is, I would say that this is a, a model study for impact, how to use beauty in this context. Sorry, you have. Yeah, what can, what can I say? I can cite uh, uh, Giovanni Muzio, uh, uh, an, uh, an Italian architect, a master architect of the first half of the uh, uh, 20th century, when he said that uh, architecture is a political act and it is uh, a social art. Thank you. <laughs>